Hey everybody, welcome to Earth and Time, a channel where we study human and Earth history. And today, we're somewhere where those two places intersect. I'm actually in downtown San Diego, California, and I'm actually visiting the Fault Line Park, which is right behind me here. And today we're gonna to talk about the Rose Canyon Fault Zone, the fault zone that runs through downtown here and heads all the way up to La Jolla, California. So we're gonna see some cityscapes, we're gonna see some beautiful ocean views, we're even going to get to the highest point in the greater San Diego area. So with all that being said, let's get to it and learn about the Rose Canyon Fault Zone. Pretty cool that they actually embrace this idea of a fault zone. So as you can see, we're actually in the city here. See these big high rises on either side. So I believe the path I'm actually walking on right now is the fault zone coming through here and it runs north of us all the way to the La Jolla Cove. And we're gonna follow this path all the way there. But first, let's see if we can explore this place a little bit more. And what's fascinating about it is they actually have some displays up here. They're kind of like the Bean in Chicago. And what they've done is you can actually look through the hole here and look at the other Bean on the other side. And if there's been any movement along this fault, that should move to the right of us. So we're on the Rose Canyon Fault Zone, as I said, and this is a fault that got established about four million years ago. And it is a right lateral strike slip fault in the family of faults related to the San Andreas Fault System that was set up in this area about five million years ago. So this is a slightly younger fault. And what we'd expect with the ball across the way is if this is the fault line running right between us on the sidewalk, we would expect that ball to move to our right because it's a right lateral fault zone. So if an earthquake happens, that should move that direction. And the plate I'm on here would move that direction. So we call it a right lateral fault zone because whatever object I'm looking at on the other side of the fault zone would move to my right. Now, the fault here is moving about one millimeter a year. I mean, it's a teeny tiny teeny tiny amount of movement per year. So that means it's not moving a whole lot, not like the San Andreas fault itself, which is moving, you know, centimeters a year up to about an inch, uh, between one and two inches actually a year on average, right? So these faults, they build pressure, they move, they build pressure, they move, but the distance they move, they can average that between each of the different earthquake events. And in this case, from what I read, so it turns out based on some historic evidence, they think the fault here moved in the 1700s. Now they have trenched the fault as well to look at it and understand it. But that means it moved within about the last 300 years. And what they found is it has a major earthquake event here somewhere around every 700 years. So I'm hoping if I do my math right, duh, 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 you know, somewhere hopefully around 400 years before the next major event occurs here on this fault zone. It is pretty cool to see that the city here has embraced this idea that they live in a tectonically active area and instead of shying away from it they built this fault park here to help people understand it and to use it as a teaching method so you all know i'm also a sucker for rocks so they have some beautiful gneisses in here so these are rocks that were once most likely granites or some granodiorite maybe and they've been metamorphosed, which gives it that striping look. So these have been put under some kind of high temperature, high pressure, probably associated with the faulting here. So before the San Andreas set up how it is today as a strike slip fault system, the Pacific plate was actually subducting underneath the North American plate, similar to what's happening on the north end of that plate now. So you can think of things like the Cascade Range in Oregon and Washington, where you have a subducting zone creating volcanoes. You had something similar here about 30 million years ago going on. And like I said, about 5 million, 6 million years ago, the San Andreas set up in its present location, set up things like the Gulf of Mexico. And of course this fault here, that's represented by Fault Line Park, all set up about four million years ago. Here's the Rose Canyon Fault Zone. What that means for these rocks is they may have started as granite or some other type of igneous rock, but now some of them have been metamorphosed. And as I walk up here and look at some of these cool boulders up here, you can actually see different interesting fabrics in them, all related to what was happening here in the West Coast over the last 30 million years. 
All right, made it back to the front of the fault line park area here. Let's go work our way up the road and let's go up to Soledad Mountain and talk about the fault zone as it extends that way and then into La Jolla. All right, we've made it on top of what's known as Mount Soledad and it's absolutely beautiful up here. Probably the best views in San Diego. In fact, if we look off in the distance, we can actually see downtown San Diego there, which is where we started at, at Fault Line Park. And actually, the Fault Line comes from there, runs on the east side of this feature, or one of the faults runs along the east side of Soledad. And there's actually another fault that runs across the west side as well, and it's actually popped up this whole block. So this is what we call a pressure ridge or a pop-up block here that's associated with that Rose Canyon fault zone. In fact, if I turn it back around, we can actually see where I believe that's I-5 running through there. And so the fault zone runs right along the ridge there, comes down, comes on the other side of this mountain as one strand. And there's actually a strand that runs right down this valley in front of us. In fact, a lot of times you know where the faults are in this type of terrain because you can see where the water is running down and water likes to find weak spots in the Earth's crust or in the surface. And so it's actually following a fault zone that goes right down and steps into that ridge that we see right along I-5. The other thing we can see here is actually Mission Bay here is actually related to the faulting as well. We're in a section right here where this is all popped up. The bay is a result of where the fault has actually down dropped the area, so created a little basin, which is why the ocean came in and flooded this section. So I'm now walking to the north side of Mount Soledad and we can see up the coastline here. So this is the Pacific Ocean looking northwards. La Jolla is down in that direction. But what I want to do is come to this little alcove and look down in the canyon here. So here's that main fault strand moving down towards La Jolla where it actually cuts through at about La Jolla Bay. And I'm going to try to make our way down there so we can actually take a look at and learn a little bit more about the fault down there and see if we can actually see a portion of the fault or what's really a fault zone down that way to take a look at. So it turns out as I'm standing up here, I've actually seen some military vehicles flying off in the distance, including some Ospreys, Apaches, some Blackhawks, all in formation. And I just heard from some of the locals that the Blue Angels are practicing out here. I think the air show here in San Diego is next weekend or the following weekend. We may get a chance to see the Blue Angels fly over us. That would be really cool if that happens. From up on top of the hill here, but what I want to show is that this is where the fault comes through and you can see the drastic topographic difference from Mount Soledad here. That's this big pop-up block or pressure ridge and the valley down below. So the fault is actually running right through there and it ends up exiting right along the edge of the La Jolla Cove and coastline here. I will say I'm here to look at the geology, but the views are absolutely spectacular as well. You just can't beat the view of the West Coast here in California. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. So on my board is to the right. This is the Pacific Ocean, La Jolla is in this area, downtown San Diego is in that direction, which is that way. So we're looking to the north towards the Pacific Ocean over here, and that's that embayment that we see here. And we're standing up here on Mount Soledad up on this hill. So what's happening is the Rose Canyon fault zone is a right lateral fault zone. So let me put it this way. So this would be south, this would be more north. And it means right lateral, it means that the east side is going south, the north side, or excuse me, the west side is going towards the north. And because of that geometry, where there's a slight bend in the fault here and stepping over between these fault zones, we've popped up this Mount Soledad section or unit here which gives us this mountain and the view we can see from here so we're bounded on both sides here by the rose canyon fault zone so the rose canyon fault's a singular strand but it actually makes up a whole zone through this section now the inverse kind of happens at mission bay it actually creates a low here because of some additionally additional stepping over in this region so water was able to come in farther because it created a basin down dropped it created a high here at soledad a low here at mission bay and it's all related to this concept of this thing 
not being a single fault, but really a fault zone. And I hope we're going to be able to see more of the fault zone once we get down to the cove in La Jolla, where we may see some of this additional deformation. So right lateral fault established about 4 million years ago here, moving about a millimeter a year, and it's spread out over kind of a wide zone here with Mount Soledad being along this, what we call restraining bend or bend that allows it to pop up. Although I can't see it here, I did read there are some landslides. So you can imagine you're popping this block up and it's raising fairly quickly, all things considered. There's actually some landslide deposits that come down off the sides of this feature. I can't see any from here, but I read about some. If I do catch a glimpse of them, I'll point them out for you. All right, so from on top of Mount Soledad, let's go work our way down and go check out the La Jolla Cove and see if we can see some of this evidence of these faults coming through. Again, although it starts as really one main fault strand, it starts branching out, especially in this area. So it really is a fault zone that's, you know, a mile across, maybe plus in this area. Let's go see if we can make some observations about that down in La Jolla Cove. So I actually ended up hanging out up here on the mountain a little while longer, hoping to see the Blue Angels, but I see a lot of people camped out here, waited for a while, I didn't see them, and I have to get going to the next stop. So maybe we'll see them over La Jolla, or maybe they already flew, I'm not sure. All right, next stop. All right, I've worked my way down from Mount Soledad that you can see behind me up here, and I've come down, and now we're gonna hike down towards the shoreline down there and go take a look at the faults that cut through this section of the La Jolla Cliffs. All right, so I was on Mount Soledad. I missed the Blue Angels, but maybe you can see them off in the distance over here practicing. So I came down to La Jolla and now the Blue Angels are out flying around, pretty cool. And more importantly, we're coming down to the coastline here where we can start looking at some of the geology along La Jolla. I'm here on a weekend and you can see the La Jolla Cove here is just jumping. But what I want to show you all are the cliffs on the other side here where we can see what's known as the Point Loma Formation. These were a series of submarine fan deposits from the late Cretaceous, the time of the dinosaurs that were buried and were out in the deep water and then were popped up because of the Rose Canyon Fault that comes right through this general area. We also get a nice view of Mount Soledad over here as well. And we can actually see one of the fault strands, I believe right here where you see that ivy coming down. You can see the beds are dipping one way and there's slightly different angle on the other side. And where we can see this erosion right through this canyon, I'm sure is another one of these fault strands coming through here. And this is one of the strands of the Rose Canyon Fault comes right through this area and right into the coast. And from this side, we can see a slight difference in the geometries. You'll see these are more flat lying. If you remember on the other side of the canyon, they were dipping down. So whenever we see those dip panel changes, we know there's a fault zone. And I also know there's a fault zone right here because we can see the erosion coming down the canyon. Water likes to follow the easiest path and faults are very good at setting up that easiest path. So as I look across the way, at these cliffs, I definitely see something different here than what we saw in the last cliffs. In fact, if we go from the gray and we move our way over, you can actually see a change of gray to kind of a, a tan over on the other side. And that is definitely a strand of this fault coming through. And now we're on and approaching that eastern side of Mount Soledad. And so that Rose Canyon fault is coming through. There's a series of what we call fault splays through this area really cool to see and what a great view great place to come study geology i'll tell you what all right from this spot let's work our way along the cliffs and we'll end up down at la jolla park and see what other observations we can make about the fault zone here and some of the geology watching the blue angels practice some more that's pretty cool you see them right there So now I've worked my way a little farther towards the La Jolla Park. And again, we have a lot of the Santa Loma formation down below. And we can see another area where there is 
a recession or a receding shoreline section coming in with some palm trees on it, those are pretty good indicators that there's a fault right there. And so we have another fault zone running right through and down this valley right here. So one of the other things you can see here right along this fault zone, so the fault comes right down this canyon, but you can see there's actually a sea cave that's been formed due to the weakness in the rock and then constant wave motion and individuals kayak through there, but be warned, it can be a little treacherous in there as those waves come over. I know I'm here to talk about the geology, but look at all those pelicans and other birds just all sitting here on the edge of the rocks in La Jolla Cove. That is absolutely wild. All right, lots more birds. Plus, you can actually see some California sea lions down here on the rocks there. If I pan over here, I'll zoom in right over here and you'll see some more sea lions sunbathing down there. And a bunch of people out there swimming by all the sea lions. There's actually a whole bunch of sea lions up in the corner up there, and I'm surprised they have people swimming there. They must have rangers keeping an eye, making sure people are staying back away from them. All right, now we moved all the way over. We were on top of the cliffs way over there. We worked our way over this way, but one thing you can see is if you take a look at the cliffs coming from the right here, the Point Loma formation, kind of tannish, white where all the birds are pooping on it, of course. And then we go over to the other side and you can see where it gets really gray over there and it looks very different coming across. So that's the zone in there, most likely of the main section of the Rose Canyon Fault Zone. And we get kind of a different view of, you really see where those gray rocks are in the middle, tilted back this way. And you compare that to some of the rocks here. And we can see there are two very distinct things happening here. So this may be a little block that's dropped down from something younger, maybe something like the Monterey Formation, or it's an area where the faults are moving through and grinding up all that rock right through that region there. Pretty cool to see and getting a different vantage point from here. All right, we worked our way all the way from downtown San Diego where we started at Fault Line Park up to Mount Soledad where we saw the pop-up block and we're able to look down to Mission Bay and see the types of topography and geography created by Rose Canyon Fault Zone. Now we've ended here where the Rose Canyon Fault Zone runs out into the Pacific Ocean. So we traversed from pretty far south here up to La Jolla, really putting together and taking a look at this whole story about this fault. This fault that was established somewhere around four million years ago and it's moving about a millimeter a year, so not very much. but still considered an active fault. With that being said, I'm gonna show this beautiful view. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell for notification. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate all you joining me today to learn about the Rose Canyon Fault Zone and check out this beautiful geography and beautiful scenery here in Southern California. So with that being said, thanks again. Take care. I'll see you all on the next adventure. Bye for now.